Hey up guys, welcome back to York City. There's two games left to play this season. One against already Champions Liverpool, one against already relegated West Brom. We're looking to hold on to a very surprising European spot. See you after the intro. The big news here is that Everton actually lost that match against Bournemouth at home. So they sit on 51 points with these two games remaining which means they're six points behind us with 23 goals, the goal difference between the two sides. Even if we lose two and they win two, unless it's dramatic score lines, Everton aren't getting that sixth spot. And seventh is not going to provide a European spot either because Tottenham and Leicester, as we realised at the end of last episode, are playing the FA Cup final. So really, it's just York versus Southampton in these last two games. Now, Liverpool, already champions, may take it easy on this, may not, who knows? But there's 13 goals between us and three points. So realistically, a point will make us feel somewhat safe in these last two games. Provided Southampton don't win them both. Southampton do have to go to Tottenham in today's match as well. As their final game being away at Arsenal. So it's not like they've got an easy run in these last two either. But first, we have to deal with the situation that is Liverpool. And their ridiculous side. Still managed by Jurgen Klopp eight years in. Despite not actually winning a... Premier League in most of this actually I think they won the first Premier League and none since then so it's a little surprising to see him in there they must have done well in Europe over the years instead now the pre-match suggestions on the team did they swap these two over so I will do uh, I will also put Wilson on the bench instead of Squires and Foreman on the bench instead of Robertson they're both sort of back uh, Best apparently is okay for this so he can come in and we can line up almost first strength Barring Velasquez and Shao Nan, the team lines up as such. Dutra, Best, Courage, Medina, Laird, Lentas, Maxence and Grimes in that midfield there. Mid Madeira and Evers back on the inside four ways, as always. And Escobar up front. Now, we won't be starting this one. We are home, but we won't be starting positive. That's, that's, hmm. uh, you'll see the Liverpool team in a moment. And you'll see why I'm hesitant to continue with being positive here. Well... That actually is a curious lineup. They have decided to take it somewhat easy on me. Not even Allison in goal. If I just sort their team by value in total, you can see the players missing. Sessignon's worth 74 million. What? Okay. Um, players missing though. Kai Havertz is not playing. Top goal scorer Gianluca Esposito not playing. Frankie Jong injured, in fairness. Harry Kane also injured, along with a player that I've tried to get on loan quite often. But Andy Robertson, who's now 33, not in the team. Quite a lot of players on the bench, but outside of the regular bench spots. Virgil van Dijk, Salah, don't make the bench. Uh, the main one, really, is Florentino Luiz on the bench here. Otherwise, it's quite a high number bench. They are starting with Gomez. Malenkovic is a good defender as well. Not exactly a... Like, it's not Van Dijk, but it's not a huge downgrade. Alexander-Arnold on the right. Plasios is pretty good. Cardoso is fantastic, in fact. Pulisic and Chris Carroll, I think they're reasonably first choice these days. And Acevedo is very much third choice, but he did do us over last time we played him. So, maybe third choice striker, but still, still dangerous. They're first in the form table. We're third. Quite a massive game considering that, actually, now. M media. We'll go with the media on. Give us every benefit we can possibly get from this team talk. And, of course, we will keep our attention on that Tottenham Southampton game because if Tottenham decides to capitulate then things could get interesting for the final day. Max Sons though has a go and goes wide. Now mind Harry Wilson's already scored for Tottenham. Ezekiel Barco's already scored for Tottenham. It's 2-0 Tottenham and well suddenly sixth place is looking somewhat more assured. In fact with the 2-0 victory that rockets Tottenham up into eighth place. Not that they can catch us at this point but that's a few more millions in the Tottenham bank. Madeira though 1-0 us. What? I know it's not Allison in goal, so we do have to meet at any goal-scoring prowess in this match against that. Madeira on the volley. That's a fantastic goal, though. Good Lord. I'm not even sure Allison, even Allison would have stopped that. I actually went via Allison to get to that squad, and I did notice he had 211 clean sheets and 300-odd appearances. Yeah. Um, Allison is ridiculous on this game. I mean, so are Liverpool, let's, fa let's face it, in real life. Eversbach puts this one into the box, and Lentas is there to head over. And as they stand, we're getting to 60 points before the end of the season. I thought we might get it against West Brom at the end. Nearly an equaliser from Cardoso there. Like, my reason less of it, of course, was getting the three points against Sheffield United and getting the three points against West Brom. But 60 points are already in the locker now. We've lost 11 games and drawn nine, which seems like a lot. It does... I don't know. I am going to have to look at previous seasons to see how our point tally actually ranks. Because I feel like... I feel like this isn't necessarily a massive amount for sixth. I feel like in years gone by, 60 points would have seen you ninth or something. Lentas. I mean, it's still a lot of points, let's be real, for a newly promoted side. 
Maxence, Lentas, Maxence again. Back to Lentas. Just passing between them. Corridge is in all the space on the right hand side. I don't know what he's doing this far up. He goes for goal. Corridge, get back in defence. What are you doing up there? 3 0 Tottenham now as well. So, yeah, Southampton's hopes looking to be over there. Gomez, close. Nearly an equaliser for Liverpool. They've not had a shot on target yet. And they don't really have the firepower on the bench, bench to sort that out. They are very much focusing on the Champions League, as I wondered they might. Well, actually, also focusing on the Man City game the previous weekend as well. Chris Golo, though, one of the good players still left on the pitch, has found the equaliser, assisted by one of the other excellent players, Trent Alexander-Arnold. They're two players that I think do start these days. Uh, Pulisic is actually second choice, I think, to Salah, although eight years in, maybe not anymore. But Alexander-Arnold, one side, it's sort of a goal that you see from Liverpool reasonably often here. Alexander-Arnold on the right-hand side, to the winger on the left. Not Sadio Mane these days, but Chris Guolo. And actually, for a fourth choice, Graham Watts is not terrible at all either. The strength and depth they have in the striking role is genuinely ridiculous. Foreman, though, can come on for Escobar in what is technically a strengthening of that position. And I'm seeing Best being on 70%, so he's going to about to run out of... Oh no, I didn't put Litter on the bench. Borges comes on. This is potentially a problem. Forgot to sort that out on the bench. Borges is off at the end of the year. Sorry to see him go, but he was sort of being edged out in terms of ranking. That's their only shot on target. That's Liverpool. That's Liverpool's only shot on target. Well, Graham Watts is dispossessed. <sighs> okay, well, Watts... Sergio keeps it out. Dramatically so. Doesn't even hold on to it. In 2D, that was heart-wrenching. Laird... Do not lose this ball again. Maxence gives it to Ebers back. Gives it back again. Crossed to Madeira, who we know can do things. He makes a mug of Trent Alexander-Arnold and makes it 2-1. Of all the players, of all the players to beat in world football is Trent Alexander-Arnold. Probably moving into his prime in terms of age-wise now as well, which is remarkable. Maxence here. Madeira gets this ball and takes one touch and just Trent's not even there. Right-footed, past the goalkeeper. Allison would have saved that one. It sort of goes through the goalkeeper, but that's 17 goals for Madeira this season. That is, well, let's be honest, that is Mane Salah levels of goal scoring from the wing. Quite a few tired players and we do have to play again on the final day. Although it may not really matter all that much. I will release Ebers back to the bench for the last few minutes. And we, we take a admittedly asterisked landmark victory against Liverpool. Considering what we said about Real Madeira over the years, I'm happy to see him coming to his own this year. Jürgen, by the way, we're best friends. I'm proud of the performance my boys put in. I absolutely am. I'm absolutely proud of that. This is what football's about. Privileged to watch Madeira play. Confident in... Ah! It is rumoured that Real Madeira will be leaving the club in the near future. A lot of people are sniffing around him. A lot of people are trying to get hold of him. I noticed they one of those fan poll things about signing players. It was Man United's, in fact, for Real Madeira. And 70% said, yes, sign him. <sighs> We're going to be in a fight to keep hold of him next year, I think. But... We're very close and holds me in the highest regard. And depending on what the finance situation is at the end of the year, he may be due a big contract next year just to keep him here. Well, it was a big spending year in the Premier Division this year. Sunderland spent £28 million on players. Stoke made 30 We spent 12 ish Actually, you look, at, you look at this, and it does kind of put both Southampton and our achievements in a little bit of a good light in a way, because Southampton, of course, directly behind us, they only spent £15 million, just well, £40 million net to get where they are this year. Although I suspect most of their transfer business was done the year they got the FA Cup win. After that. I just thought I'd double check the Euro Cup because I've been mugged out of 6th place Europe before. But it's between Napoli and Arsenal. Which I think will be fine because Arsenal are 5th. Which would leave 6th as Euro League either way. I, I've been done by that before on, on my Burnley stream. So first year actually with Burnley we ended up in 6th. Brighton who were relegated I think beat Man City in the final of the FA Cup. And Chelsea who were 7th won the Euro League. So Europa League. So... Us in sixth ended up with no European football. I think we're okay. So the situation on the final day has already been settled. There's no way we can't... There's no way we can finish fifth. There's no way we can finish seventh anymore. And in fact, there's actually literally nothing to settle at all anywhere in the league. Other than just a few extra million potentially for some teams. Particularly in this 41 point to 44 point block. Good God. Goal difference will settle quite a lot of that. But 10th to 16th, three points separate. So a win for some of these could... Literally end up with like six or eight million more at the end of the season. Fascinating. Well, considering this doesn't really affect us in any way at all going forward now, I'll bring you any goals. Won't really talk about too much more. In fact, uh, Nacelle. So with that in mind, uh, with nothing to play for, um, well, Alex is having a little run out now. He, by the way, has kind of, kind of largely dramatically declined physically over the year. More than I thought he would. 
Ooh, Shao, Shao's, Shao's returning to fitness. That's useful. We'll get him on the pitch at some point, I think. Cap his season off. And uh, yes, yes, Nacelle's on the bench. This this match matters. This match matters literally nothing. So, and uh, we'll go positive. We're away at the relegated side, but the front three. I want the I, I want the front three to potentially get a goal here, just for statistic purposes more than anything else. They've they they acquired Ross Barkley in January. He was overseas. I nearly went for him at the end of the year, but just very well rounded in general. He's thirty three, but significantly better physically than uh well the Ox. Did look into him. So if he was your idea for the. English player overseas that I brought in at the end of the year. Scratch him off your list. It's not him. Well, it didn't matter either way how much I was going to bring you because there's been literally no highlights in this first half. Dominant, but no highlights. I also noticed while time was ticking away that Leicester and Tottenham are having a warm-up match for the FA Cup final. 88 minutes gone and there's a highlight. Foreman. There was one previously. It was a close shot for them, actually. And actually, this looks like there might be a break for them. No, we have gathered the ball off them. I'm going to talk through this highlight in full, because there's been literally nothing else to talk about. Ebersbach out to Shao, who has come on the pitch. Shao inwards to Ebersbach again, can make its way to... Oh, I was... Lo Callum Sell grabs the ball. I was really hoping it was going to end up with him, to be honest. Shao goes past his number. Inwards to, inwards to Nacelle. No, Foreman has been found, and it's a goal for him. Of course, his final game for us for the time being, anyway. We're not activating the 103 million optional clause, obviously. But, depending on what Man United do in the transfer window, it might be a player that we pay attention to in some way, shape or form. Whether or not we can get him in again. Fills an English quota. In a similar way to the goalkeeping situation, I would like a striker that is English as well. Just to have. Whether they're first choice, second choice, third choice, doesn't really matter how far down the pecking order they are. I would like one goalkeeper and one striker, at the very least, to be English. In general, not just to fill the quota. But it was a scintillating match, which was decided in the 89th minute. Those stats, considering we saw two of those shots during the match. I dread to think how bad the rest of them were. I'm just going to say well done, lads. More as, more as a response for the entire season than the, just that match, because it was a little poor from them. Now, of course, I will click through until we get end of season stuff, but I do want to very, very quickly look at previous seasons. Two years ago, 70 was sixth. The year before that was 70. The year before that was 71. 76 in 21, 22. 71 the year before. 62 in the first simulated year, though where Aston Villa ended up 8th, somehow. I'll tell you, it was actually the second season in the game that Liverpool won. So clicking through, actually, it's only the first year in which 63 points would have actually ended up 6th. Yet last year, I didn't really mention it, that was 64 points. But still, it's not an amazing amount. Last year, it seemed to be a lot tighter in general in this top area, because 88 points won the title. And actually, 7th, 54 points, is a dramatic departure from usual there. I think, weirdly, there's been a... A strange consolidation of points in the middle of the park. Quite a lot of teams on similar points here in the middle, and three poor, rele well, three relatively poor relegated sides as well. Most years, sixty-three points would not have got six. So we have very much capitalised on everyone else's average just this year. So that's thirty-four million for achieving sixth place with only seven hundred twenty-five thousand to be shared out. <laughs> oh dear! Financially, that leaves us with eighty-four million. I am intrigued to see what the budgets are. Well, there we go. The season best 11. Don't need to click through anywhere near as much as I used to to get to this anymore. Good news. The only person entered into the best 11 is Nicola Velasquez. After all I've talked about him in the last couple of episodes, he does enter our best 11 as one of the more longer lasting central midfielder members, I would say. I did say Ebersbach's position was probably the one randomly in midfield last year, the one that was going to get overtaken next, and it was indeed. Lee Tal, by the way, transfer listed by Aston Villa for six and a half million after they bought him for nearly 19. I nearly brought him back, but I didn't have the money, actually. I only had three million at that point, so no. James Grimes makes player of the season 66% of that vote. Ethan Laird comes second. What? How does Ethan Laird make the best 11? Okay. Uh, more importantly, how is Madeira third? Goal of the season, Madeira. Signing the season, James Grimes. But young player of the season, James Grimes. Grimes cleaning everything up, ironically. We've had a season that was reminiscent of the first year in the Championship, where first half of it was sort of what you'd expect from a newly promoted side, just bouncing around, lower half, and then January came in, and we're sixth. Now, end of next season, they're expecting us to be mid-table still. Uh, they're still looking to sell the club. There's another takeover in the works, by the way, which may affect transfer business. I now realise that's awkward. Of course, we'll accept that. End of season team meeting. This is going to be interesting. I'll say mid-table, and that's acceptable. I suspect when we come back, we'll, we'll say top half. We'll go to the USA. Aha, finally, the initial budgets. 44 million. It's not actually as much as I was expecting, weirdly, considering we have 84 million in the bank. 
but the wage budget that's what's that's what's leapt up it's still not on par with most premier league sides which was about a million just over a million or so but of course transfer budget will probably likely be shifted over towards it at some point i imagine i wouldn't be surprised if our wage budget ends up over a million although who do we sign yeah so we've we've got a gap of four hundred thousand as things stand pretty much in the wage budget 44 million to spend and the youth facilities are improving as well that's good news so Rumoured that a takeover from a potential investor could be in the offing. So it's actually just a potential investor, not a consortium. That's interesting. But of course, we'll finish things off with a look at the team. And in one appearance and one off-the-bench appearance, Calum Sol had a 7.4. Of course he did. James Grimes basically on a 7.4, pretty much echoing the, the comment I made the other, other episode where I was saying Grimes has stepped into that Nistel role perfectly. And indeed he has. Max Arnst done well in the appearances that he had as has Ethan Laird. That's why he's there. 7.16 from the lad in 18 starts and 14 sub-appearances. How many starts has Shao had in the end? 25, of course. He had the Asian Cup. That's what took him out for most of the season. And straight speaking, actually had less total appearances than Ethan Laird as a result, but way more starts. Lentas with a 7.15 at the end of that season. He, like I said, he made that position his. Real Madrid, 7.13. Best season from him. Courage, 7.09. What a signing he was. Very much under-mentioned, I would say. Medina, 7.08. Good season for him. Again, under the radar, those two central defenders under the radar. I've mentioned how little we've conceded, but the actual performances from those defenders gone somewhat unnoticed. Velasquez, over a 7 average, in fairness, this year. Really hoping he's going to develop as a player. I'm not going to look to shift him onwards, but we'll see. We'll see what happens with him over the summer. Evers back nearly gets a 7. Ne so do both the strikers, Foreman and Escobar, nearly get a 7. And we look at the other end, and the other end actually isn't a lot to be said. Alonso, 5 starts, 16 off the bench, 6.7. I don't know how much you can read into that, considering most of them are bench appearances. Same with Van Gassel, 6.8 actually, probably the best from him, weirdly. But again, mostly off the bench. You can't really look into those performances too much. And considering how far down the goalkeeper is, that, I think, says a lot about the, how the rest of the team performs, of course. So, not a lot, not many people below him in the average ratings. So, realistically, next year's main targets are left-back. Strengthening that striker role, we may look to move Nick Tay on, who's actually had a torrid time on loan as well. 6.4 average for the total season. Of course, we brought him in and then realised about the foreign player contingent quota thing. So we may look to move him on in lieu of, say, getting someone like Lewis Foreman, perhaps, depending on if we can get him for a reasonable amount of money. Not likely. We'll see. Of course, there are youth people coming through. There's a couple of signings we made a little while back who have now come of age and will be coming in. A couple of defenders, a couple of strikers. One, I've looked a little bit ahead. I've looked at them, see how they are. One of them doesn't look like he's developed anywhere near enough at this point. One of them looks like he might have, but none of them are British, which is the problem. So we'll see how that one all pans out. But in terms of strengthening the side, it is basically strength in depth in certain places. Left back, right wing is a big one. They're two places that we could probably look to get a better player in and have the existing one play back up. Who knows? And central defence, of course, as well, because we did lose Edgar. Borges has gone on the end of the year, so we are going to need to get backups at the very least in defenders, even with the ones that are coming in, who look okay. They, they're backup level. So we'll see how everything pans out next year as we try to build a team to, to deal with the Euro League. And if the, Euro, if the Europa League goes anywhere near it, as well as it has on my Southampton save, pitcher incoming, we're in for a wild ride. Let's just say that for now. Actually, before I go, tomorrow, there's going to be a video tomorrow it's not going to be York. It's going to be something a little bit different. I've not mentioned it during this. Not, I've not mentioned it during any of these recordings so far this week, which is my bad, really. But do check out of it. It's something I've been planning for a while, and I finally got around to doing it. So it's an experiment that I've not seen done before. I won't be surprised if it has somewhere, but I've not seen it being done before. So check out for that. Keep an eye out for that at the weekend. Until next time, ta -ra. What a season.